Hello, I'm Big G Video and welcome to this review of Previs Pro. So I am using the Pro version of Previs Pro. That is a paid version and I've been provided with that by the company who makes Previs Pro in order to review this thoroughly. So I'm doing a thorough review today of Previs Pro. Just to be completely clear, I am using this on a Mac. So to do the screen recording, but I also have this on my iPhone and I have this software on my iPad, but for convenience, I'm recording it on a Mac. So what I like about Previs Pro is it does exactly what the name suggests. It allows you to pre-visualize things. So I've already made two short films of Previs Pro. We're gonna dip into those today as I explain what Previs Pro does and what you can do with it and how to use it. So we're gonna go here to this crime short. And you can see I've got a variety of scenes and I'm going to open this scene up here. And what we have here is we have a set and it's currently, it doesn't look like a set, but I've built a set and I've built it using objects within Previs Pro. So I'm going to go to 3D and I can scroll around the set. Again, if you were using this on the iPad, you'd use your fingers and pinch to zoom and move in and move out. And I've built basically a basic set. Now, something I do like is we've got this button here and it does a little three dimensional tour. Let's see that. That's really good just to orientate. Ah, oh, there we are, excellent. And it goes straight into the, the first scene. So. Let's just have a look over here. I'm just going to spin this around a bit so you can see. Here I have a picture and I put a picture in because I wanted to build a set that looked like it was an apartment. So we can see down here we've got various shots that I've taken and basically with Previs Pro you build a set, you put actors in, and then you use your camera and you take shots and those help form your storyboard. So what I would suggest with Previs Pro is that you just build as the minimum that you need for your shot. So for example, in this first picture here, we're in a corridor. So I've built a corridor. So I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna show you the corridor. I'm just gonna spin around a little bit. We can see here is the corridor and here's my camera. So the first shot I took was of someone in a corridor. So I've made it as convincing as I can. I put a light up here, I put a door, I put walls and so on and so forth. I'm just gonna click into the camera, but before I do, I'm just gonna add a new scene, scene B here. So if I click on this camera, I can do quite a lot of things within this camera. I can click on monitor, and it gives me a view that I can move the camera around. So I can move it around, I can change its focal length, I can do some focusing, so I can do manual focusing, or I can do automatic focusing, and focus on him, and I can get a shallow depth of field, so on and so forth. I can put grids on, but I'm, I'm just gonna cancel that. So when we select an object, we can rotate it, and you can see over here that the camera monitor is rotating and we can raise it up and down so here I can change its height here I can change all its pans so I can move it and reorientate it in three-dimensional space and I can do that with objects as well so I can do something like that and here I can just change the focal length so let I can make it narrower or I can make it really wide so you can see the changes are happening in real time in this image that I'm taking. Here I've got a light and again, I can change the focus of the beam. That looks much more noir, or I can make it wide. I can again, change its height, change its angle, etc. I've built this set. I'm gonna move this camera so we can see out the window. And I want to put it back more to a normal orientation and I'm just gonna spin it around over here. And I am gonna go into monitor so that we can see out of the window. So I'm going to autofocus here and we can see that there's a window here and outside it looks like there is a 
like a street so I wanted it to look like a New York apartment so the way I did that was I just put a picture in so you can insert pictures and they just act as walls and that's really quite useful so here I've got actors as well and I can move these actors about and I can put them where I want put objects where I want and then I can take pictures to inform my storyboard or build up my storyboard so if I go to this up here I can add a camera a character a prop a wall a light or I can port something so let's add a character now what I can do is I can change the height of the character here they're all fairly standard characters I can pick a different body type so I could pick this chap or I could pick a child or a female kids let's pick let's stay with this chap and I can change their skin tone and their the tone of their clothes as well I can also add them to the cast if I'm going to reuse them in various other scenes so I'm just going to add this person he's added here I'm going to move him around over here and again I can spin him around I'm going to add a prop as well so when you get the paid for version you get a lot of props you won't have a prop for everything for every eventuality but you do have lots of props that you can use so i've got all these basic shapes i've got a furnishing i've got quite a lot of furnishings i've got weapons i've got commercial struct things i've got structural stuff like doors nature i've got vehicles which even includes trains planes airplanes starships boats and even a submarine and i've got effects like fire and water so let's say we wanted to put someone in a bar scene well i'd need something i could build out to make a bar so there isn't a bar in here so sometimes you have to be a bit creative so i'm going to show you how i would be creative and build out a bar so I'm going to put that in that's gone over here so we're going to move it over here we're going to stick it against a wall and spin it around the other way bring it down here and I'm going to scale it up to be quite big so we can also scale things and I'm going to take my man over here and I'm going to put him behind the bar and I'm going to need my camera for this. So I'm just going to. So I said before that what we, what you should do is you should do the minimum. So this isn't a bar, but I need to do the minimum for my shot. So I'm going to change his pose. He's going to be sitting like that. Might need to just change his height again bring him a little bit closer that's probably as far as I can take him I'm going to put him over here and I'm going to add some more props just to make it look convincing so we've now got that bar scene excellent so that's all we need to do now I've set this project to be black and white but we could also have it as color so if I go to scene information I've also put the floor to be dark wood and I can also change the sky so I can pick between interior I can give it a scene number I can give it a location reference I can write some notes and I can set it to day night or twilight I can pick different floors if I want to I'm not going to explore that this is my apartment, so I've got a dark wood floor, but I'm going to change the color grade and I'm gonna have, this as my color grade. So now we get slightly different colors. So I was using a noir color grade, which put it in black and white, but now I've just changed that to show the colors. I'm just gonna import an image to be something more bar-like, So 
not very useful as it is at the moment. If I put it behind, it's not very useful. So I have to raise it up to where it can be seen. Again, that's not very useful. I need to rotate it. That's better and I need to scale it. And I just need to put it in a slightly different place. Let's look at it. That looks really quite authentic. I might want to make the lights a little bit moodier. So now I'm going to just move this over here. Maybe turn it around a bit like that. That looks a little bit moodier. I've got lights elsewhere. So what I might do is I might edit them and I'm just going to take the intensity down of this one. Go back to that monitor. So that's looking good. I'm happy with that. Um, and again, I can play with the lights. I'm not going to do that. I am going to auto focus on this chap and that just puts everything else um, at a shallow depth of field. So I'm happy with that bar scene. Now I'm going to go to a different project now because I'm going to go to um, a submarine drama that I made. And this is really on quite a big scale. So you can see here I've got a submarine, I've got people in, I've got a, a battleship being sunk. And again, the battleship is just a picture. I'm going to see if I can find it. Here we are. And I'm going to go into 3D. So that's just a picture that I put in the background. I put some fire in. And I've got a lantern here and here's my camera. And I've got some people standing off to the side not doing anything. But why I wanted to go to this exact set of images is because I wanted to do a, a scene in a crew bunk. Now in a crew bunk, you've got various things, but I didn't have a crew bunk. I didn't have bunk beds. So I built my own and I built it to look quite authentic. So you can see here, I've got my lantern that I talked about before. I have set the color to be red. And what I've done is I've just built a very simple set that, and you can see I've put here a, a vending machine because to start with I used a vending machine. But I've got a towel rail with a towel on and I've just stacked some tables like so. And that is enough to make it look like a crew bunk. So these are just tables that came from my furniture and these are towel rails and here is someone lying down. This section here, which is the command area, the bridge, and again, I didn't really have anything I could build. So I've just put some bare bulb lights in and I've just used the furniture I have. So these are sort of square shapes. These are people sat in seats. And because it's dimly lit, it looks like a control room, even though it, it's not a control room. And we've got wooden floors. I thought it was quite keeping with World War II. These are just shapes made into a wall to build that set. And because the focus is on the two actors here, or the two characters, you don't tend to notice the background and the fact it's just shapes rather than an actual set. So in this previous Pro, I've imported a different character. So again, I'm going to go to 3D and you'll see here, this character clearly did not come from the stock selection in previous Pro. This person came from a third party website because you can import characters as well as props. So when we talk about importing props, you've seen me import an image. I've already imported an image. I can import props, but you can also import characters. So you can import characters from a file, which is what I did. And and I imported this from ActorCore. I went to ActorCore from Real Illusion and I downloaded one of their free characters. Of course, some characters you need to pay for. Here she is, here's one of the free characters. And I just imported that into Previs Pro, as we've seen before. Other actor imports you can do in Previs Pro are as follows. There's an integration with Ready Player Me. So you can import custom characters that you can build in Ready Player Me and you can import them into Previs Pro. 
that's excellent so if I click on here we can do a selfie or we can continue without a photo so we can pick a character it will build an avatar we can customize them we can go through all sort of customizations you don't have to sign up and then you can import it which i think is amazing you obviously don't get a huge amount of choice um, with what you can do you can't customize it to the nth degree or you can't customize your character to the nth degree but it is pretty good and it's free so i'm really impressed with this integration with ready player me so here we are here's my character that i've just created and one thing I can do is, if I click on them, I can give them expressions. Now, what's really good is within Previs Pro, there are expressions you can do, but these work with imported characters as well. So let's make her look angry, and let's click on her again, and we can do poses. So I've got all these poses. But what I can also do, which I can only do on my iPhone, is I can use pose capture. So I can use the camera and I can get an actual person to pose in a certain way. And I can use that pose within Previs Pro, which I think is just amazing. So let's go back to our crime shorts. Let's say we've built our various sets. We've put our characters in. We've built our sets. We've got all the images we want. Well, what can we do with that? What we can do with that is we can export it. So within this menu, we can share the project. I can even share the project over AirDrop if I want to. Um, I can change the project settings. So I might want to change the camera and I've got full frame, iPhone, micro four thirds. I've got a lot of choice here. I can change the aspect ratio. I can change my color grade. Again, I picked Noir color grade and I can lock things. But, but the big thing with Previs Pro is exporting it because you don't want it to live within previous pro you want to export it so you can share it with people so if i export it i can do a variety of things i can export it as images in, in either jpeg or png or i can export it as a pdf or i can export it as an mp4 file but let's focus on images we get all these different export formats so we can have a scene with with a this one is what the camera sees with a top down view and some notes here we've got just all the images side by side or we can have just a single image for each scene top down or we can have it with metadata which is really useful so if i pick this and i click export i will get all those scenes exported as images and that's what i did before and i used a video editor to build my story something else you can do which is incredibly useful and again i can't show you this within the Mac version, but I can show you within the iPhone version, you can use augmented reality. So you can place your scene outside in the real world and you get an augmented reality. So that means you don't have to build a dam or you don't have to build a park. You can build your characters and build some props and you can take it to a park and you can place it within a park using the augmented reality. And you can see that here. Let's go back to our bar scene. Another thing I can do is I can annotate the shots. And the way I can annotate the shot is either with props. So I might want to look at tools. So we've got some annotations here. I can stick in post-it notes that say zoom and pan, and I can stick in arrows. Let's put some arrows in here. Yeah, you can see I made my arrow very, very big. And yep, here's a big arrow. So I can put that in. Or another thing I can do if I want to, I can click here and I can do some drawing. So let's draw in black. Where's black? Here we go. And I might want to do just some drawing like that. Put marks down for where people have to stand etc and I'm going to click done and I can only see that on the floor on the 2d floor plan I can't see that in 3d but here we are I can see some extra stuff so that's incredibly useful as well so I think previous pro is excellent it's really good that you buy it once and it works 
on your iPhone, your iPad, and if you have one of the newer Macs, it works on the new Macs as well. I think it's excellent and I'm really enjoying using it and I'm creating lots of little storyboards and scenes that I can use. Anyway, let me know what you think. I hope you found this review and tutorial useful. And if you have any questions about previous pro, do get in contact. Thank you. Goodbye.